Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So you've seen the pictures of the dollies that I've made. Um, I'm going to show you. These are little fairy dollies, so they're going to have wings on their backs. Um, and we're also going to be doing the pantaloons, which do come off. So let's get started. Um, I am going to make them. These are going to be the color of my shoes and my dress and stuff. You can pick any color you want. I'm using a four weight worsted yarn. I'm using a five millimeter or an H hook. And um, I'm using this for a skin color. So whatever color you want your shoes, that's the color you're going to start with. So um, unfortunately we're going to start with a magic ring. And I know how much you guys don't really like that, but I'm going to go slow. So you've got your ring and you've got your chain one all in one motion. So you're going to put six single crochets into the center. Pull that tight. You are going to need a stitch marker because we're going amigurumi style. So you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch round, and if this first one is difficult to get into, like it can be, just take a needle, pull up and wiggle it, it just kind of stretches it out. It'll all go back in a shape. So just put two single crochets in each stitch around, and after your first stitch for this hole, you're going to put your stitch marker. Then you can put your second stitch into that same space. And continue around with two single crochets in each stitch. So count to 12. So the next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So an increase is two single crochets in the same space. So you're going to put your one single crochet in. And then your next, your next stitch is going to be two single crochets. And that's your increase, two in the same hole. So the next stitch will be one single crochet and the next stitch will be two single crochets. So repeat that all the way around and at the end you should have a total of 18 stitches. So if you've done everything right, you should end your repeat at your markers, which is two single crochets in that same space. So I'm going to switch colors now because that's about the bottom of my shoe. So I'm going to go to the blue now. I'm going to throw this blue on the ground. So you don't have to switch colors here. If you're doing your shoe all in one color, you don't have to worry about switching here. And 
get into my stitch. So for this round, you're going to do sing seven single crochets. That's hard to say. So I've already done my first one and I'm not going to use my stitch marker because I've switched colors. So I don't really need it until I come back around. But if you're not switching colors, put your stitch marker in on this first stitch. That's my first stitch. That's one single crochet. I'm doing seven. Sorry, bear with me. I'm trying to just weave my ends in as I go. And for some reason it's starting out very awkward. That was a hard seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. Okay. So that was difficult for some reason, and I don't think it needed to be. So after you've done your seven single crochets, and now you're waiting for me, um, you can do two half double crochets in the next stitch. So a half double is yarn over, go into your stitch. You got three loops. You're just going to pull through all the loops. So that's your half double. So put two of them into this same stitch. Sorry, my camera shut off after three minutes. You're gonna put two sing or two half double crochets into the next stitch. This video is not starting off great. Hopefully it gets better. So we're just shaping the foot at this point. You're gonna put two half doubles in the next stitch. and two half doubles. <clears throat> two half doubles into the next stitch. And then you can single crochet seven back around. So you should have a total of 22 stitches. So we're just gonna single crochet seven. I am cutting this off. I don't need this on anymore so I'm just going to snip off the purple for now. So you should have a total of 22 stitches. So we've shaped the foot. I think you can slightly see it there. So your next row is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch around. So now i got to go back to my marker because if you ever lose track of where your marker should be, right here where we started the spiral that's where your marker should be. So if you ever forget to put the marker back or anything, just look at, so this is the circle we started with, but this is where we started our spiral, and that should be where your marker's at. So one single crochet for 22 stitches, So that was my 22 stitches. So now we're going to decrease a little bit. 
So after this decrease, we're going to change to our skin color. So this is our last with our color colors. So you're going to do two single crochets. So after the first one, put your stitch marker in. Do another single crochet. And then you're going to do a decrease. So that's yarn over, pull through, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops. You're going to come through all three of those loops. That's a decrease. So you're just single crocheting two stitches together. So repeat, single crochet, single crochet, and decrease. All the way around. Now you won't be able to fit your full last one in. You can just do single crochet, single crochet, and then you're at your marker. Just like that. So now we're going to switch to the skin color. You can, you can switch. There's two ways you can do this. So the last way you've probably seen, I just put it there, came through the stitch, grabbed it, pulled through. If it's easier for you, you can just make a slip stitch. Make it small to fit your hook. Come through the stitch. Put your slip stitch on there. Let me just make sure it's tight. Then you can pull through and finish your stitch. Whoops. I can get caught up on a bunch of crap. Finish your stitch. Pull your blue tight. Pull your white tight. And you're all set. You're all ready to go. So now that we're attached, we are going to do another decrease. So that's our first stitch. So we're going to do one stitch and a decrease. So this is our first stitch. So our next one is just going to be a decrease. I'm weaving my ends in as I go. As awkward as it is, it's worth it. So one single crochet and a decrease. One single crochet and a decrease. So you can cut the other colors off whenever you want. I'm just about back around, so I'll cut them off. There we go. So we can cut all of this off. And I just cut off my purple tail too from when I started. So I'm going to throw my white on the floor because it's a great big ball. So at this point you should have 12 stitches. So for the next 18 rows, it's just going to be a single crochet in each stitch round. So you can either just count 12, or you can put your stitch marker in. So, I'm not going to do all of it with you, obviously, not 18 rows. So, um, I'm going to leave you to it, to do your 18 rows, and then um, I'll put my pause screen up. 
so you don't have to worry about anything. So put my pause screen up. You do your 18 rows. You can make your second leg. I'll put the pattern up there so you can make your second leg. And um, the one leg you can f fasten off with, but don't fasten off with the other leg. And I will meet you right back here and we'll proceed. Hi guys, so I thought I'd better show you before we go any further. So before the pause screen, I'm just going to show you how to stuff this guy. You're going to have to stuff as you go. And it didn't dawn on me until right now, but I didn't get too far on my leg. So, shove some stuffing down there, and you're going to want to stuff as you go. But you're going to have to stuff it to shape the foot. I mean, even though we kind of shaped the foot, you're still going to have to... So, really just shove it right into the toe part. But, try not to overstuff it either, and then whatever's left you can shove down into the heel part. So press on the bottom to kind of move, help move it around a bit. So it takes actually quite a bit. More than you would think. And then you can shove it up the leg as normal. Making the leg, you can make the leg as fat or as skinny as you want, but yeah, just try to kind of shove into the toe part and you can move it around after so that you get it set like that so I just wanted to give you an idea and then you can stuff as you go and then um, so now I'll actually put the pause screen up <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to finish stuffing my one leg. So this one I fastened off with and I just shoved the string, the yarn, down the, down inside. So it doesn't have to be super duper to the top or anything because we're not com we're not closing this up. We're going to stitch around it. So make sure you got both your feet going in the right direction. So you take your stitch marker out because it doesn't really matter at this point. And we're going to use it to, so I think I need one more row. I didn't actually count. I should have counted. I think I need one more row. That didn't seem even to me. So I'm just going to go around again. Okay, so that's more like it. So I suggest you find your middle. Your middle stitches and stitch them together like that. Actually, I'm going to go back one more. So, what I want you to do, this might be a little unorthodox, but this is the way I do it. I don't know how everybody else does it. 
So just single crochet around to that marker. I'm struggling to do anything today. I don't know why. So right into the stitch before the marker, chain four, and then you're going to go right into the stitch beside the marker on this leg. Holy cow, I am awkward today. And then you're just going to stitch around to get to the stitch before the marker on the other side and you're going to do the exact same thing. And even into this oddball stitch that uh, you uh, fastened off in. Chain four. Go into the stitch again right next to the marker. So you're going to have a bit of a hole in your crotch. And we're going to sew that right up as soon as we switch colors. And then you can single crochet back around. To about roughly where your stitch marker was. You can, if you can remember, you can also go by where your spiral starts. So, mine was about there. So you can take this part now because we're going to have to crochet into these stitches. So, it, I have more than one marker. I could have just used two markers for this. But I didn't bring them out to my work table. They're in the other room. So, that's why I only used one. So, we're just going to continue. So this will be round two. We're going to do three rounds. So you're just going to single crochet. And then when you get to your chain, you are going to go right into that chain. Preferably both the stitches into that chain. We get in one stitches. Nope. I'm only getting the one. There, I got two. Might be a little awkward trying to get two stitches. That one was easy. And then right back to the other leg. Single crochet around. I know I'm really close to the camera right now. But... The last, the third round before I increase, the last round, um, it, um, it'll be easier. I think I might ball unstuck from the table. So it'll be a lot easier to go around because we've already messed around with trying to do these uh, chains. So thankfully there's only four or three. Like if you're if you're doing them and you only want if you're doing it and you only want uh, the space between your legs to be smaller, then just do three.
so it can be quite awkward. And then you're back onto your legs. So the next round is just again, same thing, just one single crochet in each stitch round. Um, I can't give you a number of stitches because number one, I didn't write them down. Um, and it all depends on how many spaces you put between your legs. So that's why I didn't keep track of my stitches because um, not everyone's gonna put four stitches between their legs so that's the gap so you may want to only do three so then that would change your stitch count so don't worry too much about the stitches you can't really screw this up stitch count doesn't really mean anything right now so we're just going to do our final row before our increase So if you don't put, um, if you don't stuff your legs tight up in this area, um, you'll be able, the doll will be able to sit and stand. So it all depends on how much stuffing you put up in the, around the crotch area of the doll. Right now, none, because we got a great big hole in our crotch. So that's our third row of straight single crochets. We are going to do an increase and then we'll switch colors. So our increase is just going to be one single crochet and an increase all the way around. So that's my one single crochet, two in this hole. So it's pretty aggressive. One single crochet and then two single crochets all the way around. I keep hitting the camera with my legs. So I'm going to finish my increase and I will meet you back around at the stitch marker. Okay, so I'm back around. I've done my decrease or my increase. <laughs> so I'm going to switch colors to whatever color you want your dress to be. So mine's going to be two different colors. So if you're doing two different colors, whatever color you want the top to be is the color we're going to change to right now. Because what I've done is this is where I've changed colors. So I changed colors here but I'm gonna, I want my top to be purple and I want my no actually I think I'll change to blue I'll have my top blue and my dress purple yeah so I'm gonna change to my so to my blue color then put my purple back like I said I didn't plan out what I was gonna do with my colors I just knew what River wanted as far as colors so so I'm just going to change to my blue. So I don't need my stitch marker because I've changed to my color. So you're going to do 10 rows of your dress color. After the first row, obviously, you're going to need to put your stitch marker when you come back around. And it's just, it's all just one single crochet in each stitch around for the next 10 rows. So I'm going to weave in my white 
for a little bit here. And then once I cut it off, then we can sew up this hole so that when you do your 10 rows, um, you're going to be able to stuff it along the way. So we'll just do a little bit here, weaving this white tail in. Oops. Sewing up the crotch is pretty simple, and you can't even really tell that the crotch is sewn up the way we're going to do it. But there's really no getting around it, as far as I know anyway, there's no getting around it. So. That's probably good for about where I'm taking my white. So snip that off and then you're going to want to snip off a piece for sewing. So make a slip knot on the one end of it because we're going to use that while we sew. I didn't bring my needles out too either. So pull that out so you don't lose your loop. So what we're first going to do is find your end. No, I got to go get my other needle. I don't like this one seems thick. So I need my um, package. Needles. Use that one. Okay, let's try this again. So find your end. And you just want to go through the stitches. You don't want to go deep down into the leg or just want to go through your stitches. See if I can do it this way. Find an easy way to show you. Then you're going to come through that loop. Pull as tight as you can so you make that knot pretty small. Because we don't want to see any of that after. So you're just going to do a whip stitch. So all you're going to do is just go through your stitches. And pull pretty tight. I know it can be awkward. Oops. It's really awkward to show you. It's a lot easier to do it without trying to show you. You're just going through your stitches, do you see? We're not we're not going in deep, we're just going just through our stitches so that each each thing we do, each sew we do, is just gonna look like a stitch. With a whip stitch. So I'm not going over crazy just going through the very top and it'll hold I don't think you have to go down deep into something for it to to hold it should hold perfectly fine make sure you get that part of the leg Perhaps a little tight so once your crotch is all sewn up and it looks good, you can just take your, go in as close as you can to your piece and just shove it into your doll. So once you pull that, it just looks like a stitch. So if you go in close enough to this piece of thread, 
and you pop out somewhere. When you pull that, it just looks like a stitch. So you won't be able to see it. But if you go way out, you're going to see it. So you got to just try to find a hole that's fairly close to that. And just weave back and forth. And you're just basically giving it an opportunity to get lodged in there. So that if it does try to come undone, it's got different directions it has to go. It has, it's got quite a ways to go. So that's the whole purpose behind that. I can snip that off. And then we're basically going to do the same thing with this piece from the slip knot. You're just going to start weaving it in and down through the stuffing. I'm find a spot to start weaving. And down through the stuffing and pop out. You probably don't have a lot of room for something like this, but I'll try to at least do it a couple of times. your crotch sewn shut so won't be noticeable at all that that's happened so, so since that is done we can continue on with our 10 rows of our dress color so I will put up my pause screen and uh, I will meet you back here so when you come back around don't forget to put your stitch marker in because once you start layering the blue you're going to forget where your stitch marker was. So, um, and I know that sounds like it should be common sense but trust me I've forgotten because you know you get watching TV or whatever and you're just kind of doing it. And so, just keep in mind what I told you before earlier in this video is if you do forget where your stitch marker was you can always look at the bottom of the feet where you started your spiral and then just kind of line it up the best eyeball line up you can to get it in somewhat of a it's not going to change your stitch count your stitch count is still going to be your stitch count so it just might change things when you start decreasing and, and stuff but it's not a super duper big deal so I'm going to leave you here with my pause screen and um, you can do your 10 rows and I will meet you back when we're done Okie dokie, I got my 10 rows done. So, we're going to start to decrease now. We're going to do our first stitch. <laughs> we're going to do four single crochets all together, counting this one. So two, three, four. And then our decrease. So our decrease is single crochet two together. So four single crochets. And a decrease.
So I should have ended up my decrease off. I obviously have an extra stitch. No big deal. I'm just going to put a single crochet in there. So you can stuff this at any time. I just feel it to be easier to not stuff it yet. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet. So your next row is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. So you should have 36 stitches if you're doing everything I'm doing. So that's one, two, and three single crochets, and then your decrease. So that you repeat all the way around. Right, his legs really get in the way. again I have that extra stitch because I didn't do anything about it so I'm just gonna put a single crochet in there I'm probably not gonna do anything about it because it's not gonna make a huge difference on my doll so your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease so there's one single crochet two single crochets and a decrease all the way around And my extra stitch. 
You probably don't have one. I have one. It's not a huge deal. So now for the next six rows, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around for the next six rows. So I am going to put up my pause screen and I will meet you right back here after we've done six rows. All right, I got my six rows done. I think we're going to start putting some stuffing in here. So make sure you do get it down into that leg area. So just make sure you get it down into the legs pretty good but if you want if you do want if you do want the doll to be able to sit don't overstuff don't overstuff anyway period but so at this point you can sh you can uh, my legs are still pretty squishy that I can make the dog sit up against something but so I think that's good enough for now so our decrease is going to be two single crochet and a decrease So that's one, that's two single crochet, and then your decrease. So do that all the way around. Two single crochets. And then two together. And then I'm left with my two single crochets. So one more decrease and then we'll do a color change. So back to our skin color so we can put the head on. So this one is just going to be one single crochet and a decrease. Crochet and a decrease. Should have 12 stitches when we're done. switch to our skin color so once you switch to your skin color you're gonna do um, let's 
do this the easy way. Oh, let me go through that. Duh. Once you switch to your skin color, you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. So you're going to do an aggressive. Now we're starting the head. So you want the head nice and round. Sorry, but these legs get right in the way. So just make sure you pull tight on your blue and your white. And if it's easier to hold both, just twist them around. You're going to want to weave those in along with your stitches. So you're going to do two in each stitch. But technically, that was your first stitch. And it's blue and white, or whatever color you're using. So you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. So at the end of it, you should have 24 stitches. I'm done with my white tail. I just got my blue yarn. You can cut that off whenever, you know, you feel that it's weaved in properly. I usually go one whole go around because um, I'm just anal that way. I just really like to make sure my work isn't going to come apart. So that's just me. So, you can cut your color off now. So your next row, round, is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's your one single crochet. And then two in the next hole. So it's going to get crowded, but we got to make a nice, nice round head. So one single crochet. The next stitch, two single crochets. One single crochet, two single crochet. All the way around. It's going to be really easy to, to miss stitches, so make sure you're pulling your work apart to be able to see what you're doing. Yeah, I almost missed that stitch. So our next round is going to be two single crochet and an increase. So that's our first. This is our second. And then your increase. Two in the same stitch. So one single crochet in that stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then the next stitch gets two single crochets. So I will leave you to this and I will meet you back around on the other side.
Alright, so I've come back around again. Now this is what it should look like. And it looks pretty, pretty silly. Doesn't it? But this, it will all, I mean, it'll, it'll <laughs> look like this after we're done. So, it looks pretty stupid now. It looks like you might have done something wrong, but you haven't. Everything's right. It's supposed to look stupid like this. So, you can probably put some more filling in here. So this top part is still the dress, so um, this is where here is where we build on the other dress part. We do that after we're going to, we put the head and everything on and we'll do that for now. You can stuff this, makes it easier and you can kind of understand more where I'm headed with my funny design. So, trust me, it all works out in the end. The reason I aggressively came in like this because this is the waistline. So we're going to build the dress off of here, around here. So that's why. So try not to overstuff this. You just don't want that waistline. And then this is the top of her body and then obviously her head that we're starting. So that's what's going on there. So um, our next round is going to be um, just one single crochet in each stitch around it doesn't matter how many stitches you have, whatever you have, it's all going to work out in the end. Um, so anyway, um, 45 is what I have. But uh, again, this is beginner friendly. If you don't have 45, if you have 50, it'll be, it'll be fine. It'll still look like a head, it'll still be round, it'll still, it'll still work out okay. So from here we're going to do three rounds of just single crochet in each stitch around. So I'll meet you back here after our three rounds and you can kind of see the head coming together. Okay, so still looks kind of silly, but we're going to start decreasing. So your first round of decreases is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. So that's our first one. Well, that's five single crochets and two together for your decrease. So you should have 40 stitches and you can count them in your next round because you're doing, going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So here's where you can count your stitches and add and take away or do whatever you got to do. So this round, this round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. It's four single crochets and a decrease.
So I'm just coming together. Get in shape. Your next round is just one single crochet in each stitch around. So you should have 32 stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets in a decrease. You're not going to fit your other one in, your other decrease, so I'll just put one single crochet in there. So, at this point, you should have 26 stitches, and we're going to put one single crochet in each stitch around, and then we're going to do the eyes and the mouth. So, one single crochet, you should have 26 stitches ish. And I have my one extra stitch as usual. I've been carrying throughout this entire project. And mainly I'm doing it to show you that it really doesn't matter if you add or subtract one. Because I mean I've been adding and my face is perfectly fine. It's working out. So at this point. Make sure the front of your legs is showing. You have to put this at the front of the face. Um, once you get your safety eyes on, you're not going to be able to change it. So make sure you are at the front of your doll. Alright, so once you find the front of your doll, you can start digging out your, your eyes and your nose. So we want to do this before we fill it. I'm just going to do silver eyes. Don't often do silver eyes, but I got a lot of those. So for my eyes, so find, like I said, the front of your feet, because you don't want to this, where we just ended, should be at the back of your doll. So this should be at the back of the head of the doll. I went three rows down. So one, two, three. Found my hole. And I went five stitches across. One, two, three, four, five. So then you can kind of pop the face out at that point and uh, try to see if it looks like it's in the center or if it's looking sideways or whatever you want the doll to be doing. And I would say that's pretty centered. So I'm going to put my backs on. Just remember, once your backs are on, you're not going to get them off. You're not going to get these off again. So make sure you did it right. So I'm just going to take a little bit of black. So just a little bit of black. Pretty simple mouth, you can't really go wrong. I'm just going to go straight. Straight. 
straight in with that side. Three, four across, go straight in there. So, I mean, once it's there, then again, you can have a look to see how you feel about your mouth. Um, this one here, I only did three stitches across, one, two, three, so this one's here is obviously a little bit of a wider mouth because I kind of want all the dolls to be different, and then for Trin Trin's doll, I did a smiley mouth, so I think I'm going to go with that, so all I'm going to do is tie it in the back here. Now you can put the mouth on if you're more comfortable after, but I don't really want to do that. When I can do it before, everything's all tucked in there and I know that it's not going to pop out. So if you do it after you've stuffed the head, you'll have to tie a knot and, and hope that it just doesn't ever come out. But doing it this way, I know that's not coming out. I know. So. And stuff your head a little bit at this point we're just going to finish decreasing and uh, closing the head up so push down into that neck make sure you're getting this stuffing right down into that neck because you don't want a wobbly head A lot of head, head wobble usually happens if you if you've sewn the head to the doll but at, if you're following any of my amigurumi um, I don't like to sew my heads on I just build my heads on so so just make sure that neck is going to be nice and solid in there so I'm going to finish stuffing it later. I'm going to move on here to our next round. So our next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So there's one and our stitch marker. Keep changing the color of my stitch marker. Two single crochets and then your decrease. So, this is a little fairy that we're building, it's not just a dolly, it is a little fairy. So, we are going to be doing wings as well as arms. So I have, I've only put the one set of wings on. I left the other set of wings off the doll because the ones I showed you, we're not going to be doing those ones. We're going to be doing um, another set of wings that um, I actually designed. Um, a very long time ago, but um, I like them. The other set of wings, um, it's just a lot more work in getting them hardened so that they don't flop around. And then the ones we're going to do today on this one are going to be um, wings that are you're going to be easily be able to spray starch or do what I'm going to show you to do to stiffen them. So you should have 20 stitches. at the end of this decrease and we're going to do one stitch around one stitch in each hole so you should be able to count this row to make sure you have 20 again it's not a huge big deal if you have one or two less or more
And you guessed it, our next round is going to be one single D. It's one single crochet and a decrease. So that's our one single crochet. So we go right into a decrease. One single crochet, decrease. So I'm just going to take this out and I'm going to put my decrease in this space because right now we're just going to finish stuffing it and then we're just going to close up the head entirely so it doesn't really matter. I've got a little tiny hole where I can finish stuffing. So if you press on it and it doesn't boing back, then you don't have enough stuffing. Just make sure your head is nice and round. You don't want it to be a funny, funny shape. So all we're going to do here, we're going to do six, six times. We're going to decrease six times. So we're going to single crochet two together and we're going to do that six times. There's no single crochets in the middle of it. That's three. I'm squeezing the head two to get it nice and tight. That's four times. That's five times. So one more time for a decrease. And then you're going to fasten off. So go into your next stitch and do your slip stitch. And you're going to fasten off. But fasten off enough to sew with. Some brain leakage there. So you're going to have to move the stuffing around obviously after you've sewn it because it can be a little um, messy with all the squishing. So get your needle. So you're going to go into this stitch and then back down through that stitch like that. You're going to do the same here. You're going to go in through there, back down there. Oops, don't go into the head. And you're going to do that until you get back around to the knot and then you're just going to pull. And then that closes right up like that. And then you're going to have to come back around to keep everything nice and snug. Now we're putting a wig cap on this. We're going to make a wig cap for the hair. So it doesn't really matter what this looks like. So you can just weave your needle in and out again like we do to secure this and make sure it's not going to go anywhere. There you go. So you'll just kind of have to fix the head a little bit wherever you squished it around. But that is our doll. So I know my shoes look funny different colors, but that's what she wanted. So that's what she gets.